Okay. So, what I would like to do uh, is work out this example for you. So, it asks us to use a graphing device to estimate the absolute maximum and minimum values of the function f of x equals x minus 2 sine of x on the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. So, I went ahead and entered this into my calculator. I'm going to set my window, and I want my x value to start a little bit past 0, so maybe negative 0.1. Just want to make sure zero is included in the graph. And the maximum value, I'm just going to plug in 2 pi plus point 0.1. Again, I want to just go past 2 pi. Now, to set the y values, I'm actually going to do this in a two-step process. I'm going to do a zoom fit. And the calculator will make a very tight image where the y values just are visible from the lowest to the highest point. Problem is, when I'm tracing, this can get in the way of everything. So, now that I have a very good picture, if I didn't want to trace, what do I mean? So once I trace, I can't see the bottom of the picture anymore. So I want it to go further down. So click my window, I want it to go further down. How about negative 1.5? This is important, so when I hit trace, I can see the lowest point on the graph and the uh, coordinates of what I'm tracing. So, we want to find the absolute minimum and that maximum. We know it's not at zero, because that's not the lowest point on the graph. This is. And we know it's not at 2 pi. And just in case you're wondering, let's go to 2 pi. There's 2 pi. That's not the absolute highest point because it's there. So, let's start with the absolute max. It is roughly this location. That's not a bad estimate, 0.697 approximately. Calculator can help us if you want more accurate estimate. Second function, calculate the maximum for left bound. That means go to the left of it, enter. Right bound, that means go to the right of it, enter. Guess, that means get on it as close as we could, which is where we were starting before, and hit enter. And it didn't really change our estimate much. 0.697. Now, the minimum. Trace way over here. So I'm thinking that's about the minimum value. Wait a second, I had the wrong maximum. What was my maximum? Sorry, I had the decimal in the wrong place there. There we go. So now going to the minimum is roughly about there. And again, calculate it with the calculator, minimum. Go to the left a little bit. Enter. Should have made myself go a little bit higher on that, but that's okay. Enter. And then best guess was right around there. Enter. And my absolute minimum is about negative 0 0.685. And again, great estimates using the calculator. But to find the exact locations using calculus, the general technique that we will utilize is starting by plugging in 0 into the function. And when I plug in 0, the sine of 0 
is zero. So that's going to be pretty easy to find the y value. It's zero. And then I'll plug in 2 pi. So I'm plugging in my beginning and ending value. So the sine of 2 pi, once again, is zero. But I have an x value of 2 pi. So the y value is 2 pi. So I guarantee you, and this is what our mean value theorem give us, guarantee you that either the one of these points is the absolute max or min, or it's going to happen at one of the critical points. So now we need to find the critical points. We're going to do that by taking the derivative. And setting it equal to zero to find our critical points. Being that every location on this graph is differentiable, we don't have to worry about it being undefined. So I solve for x by adding 2 cosine of x to both sides and then dividing. Now, from our trig will, x is 1 half, you should recognize, and the sign there is square root of 3 over 2, that this occurs at pi over 3. So that's my x value. Because again, I'm solving for x. So x is pi over 3. That's one critical location. And the only other place where the x value, uh, where cosine is equal to 1 half, would be down here. And so to go all the way around would be 2 pi. And we're going to back out pi over 3. So the x value at the second location is 2 pi minus pi over 3. So make my fractions the same denominator is going to give me 5 pi over 3. And I'm sorry, not pi. So the cosine of this is 1 half. The sine of this is negative square root of 3 over 2. That's going to be important because I'm going to go back now to find the y values of my function. And so what are the y values of the function? So f of pi over 3 equals pi over 3 for x minus 2 sine of pi over 3 for x. So do I know the sine of pi over 3? Yes, I do. It is square root of 3 over 2. And this is as simplified as we can get now as exact. Well, I could add the fractions if I really wanted to. But this should be satisfactory. Pi over 3 minus the square root of 3. Okay, that's one value. The other value, well, let's check out what this value is real quick. So hopefully it's either... 6.97 or about negative 6.85. So, pi over 3. Minus the square root of 3 gives us our absolute minimum value of our function, which is what the calculator gave us for the estimate. But now we have it in exact value. Okay. 
So I will assume that 5 pi over 3 is going to give us our absolute maximum. And again, we want exact values. So f of 5 pi over 3 equals 5 pi over 3 minus 2 sine of 5 pi over 3. And we have that. That is negative square root of 3 over 2. Two's drop. Negative times a negative is positive. And my final answer is 5 pi over 3 plus the square root of 3. And if we did it correctly, that value should be about 6.97. Let's verify. 5 pi, oops. 5 pi over 3 plus the square root of 3. And yes, it gives us the same values, but now we have them exact location.